Let me call upon stage. Nitin Sony. Louder, louder, louder. Come on, louder. Dosto, success in any field is 70% psychology and 30% mechanics. Kisi bhi field mein. In whatever field you choose, success is all about 70% psychology and 30% mechanics. I want to ask you, Virat Kohli has hit the century ticket. Did Sachin Tendulkar hit the century ticket? No, he didn't hit it. But all of these three individuals are legends. In spite of the fact that they did not score century or debut. Even if you are not able to score century or debut, you can still become a legend if you take few things by understanding this. Why do you want to become what you want to become? Why do you want to get that success? Why do you want to get that degree? Why do you want to become a rank holder? Why do you want it? Answer your why. They are compromising on their potential. You have amazing potential in you. Why do you want to restrict it? You are not supposed to restrict your potential. Warren Buffett has 97 different streams of income. 97. And the day I realized, the day I noticed it, I said, 97, what the hell? What is the difference? The difference is in their psychology. That's where the entire difference lies. That's the main thing. You need to understand your psychology, your mindset. That's what you need to focus. Excellent. And I knew I would be the top scorer in the institute. And that's exactly what I did. Each and every paper that I gave, when I came back home, I said, I'm ready for the next one. And I did that ready for the next one did that then I waited for my results and on the results day what did happen I failed what is it that I can do now at the best I can study at the best I can put in the hard work at the best I can do whatever is possible for me to do what else can I do he actually looked at the big portrait of Mount Everest and he said Mount Everest I know you are failing me but the more and more you fail me the more and more I'm getting determined that one day I'm going to stand on top of you do you know why sir Edmund Henry said he said do you know why because you even as Mount Everest cannot grow any further but I as a human being will keep growing that's my message to you keep growing no matter what Mount Everest you want to climb in your life you can if you have the right mindset and you do not let your papers enter your mind why? because it's your responsibility it's your responsibility. Nobody else is going to work hard for you. Nobody else is going to bring your dream in a silver plate and say, Hey, there is your dream. Enjoy. No, that's never going to happen. You will have to work hard. You will have to put in the hard work. You will have to work the bit and you will have to make you will have to make your dream come true. The responsibility is yours. I cannot do your push-ups for you. Can I? Can I? Of course not. You will have to do your push-ups. What do you do? You notice that you are not the only one who is watching that dream. You are not the only one having that dream inside you. When there are 1000 other mothers who are having the same dream for their sons, what do you do to make the dream of your mother come true? You outwork your competition. You outwork your competition. You get up early. You work harder. You stay longer. You do whatever it takes. You got to overwork. You got to outwork. You got to outsmart everybody else. Because if you don't do it, someone else is going to do it. If you don't do it, someone else is going to do it. If you are not getting up early, someone else is getting up early. And he is going to grab your position. He's going to grab your position. Understand this. You got to outwork your competition. If it means doing anything that you have not done till date, you should be interested in doing it. Learning techniques, learning facts, programming your subconscious, whatever it may be. Be ready to outwork your company. My intensity multiplied. My hunger multiplied. My seriousness multiplied. I prepared like hell. I was actually doing things that nobody around me was doing. I was studying for 12 hours a day and I said, no matter what happens on the results day, I'm going to give my best shot in this again. I studied like anything. And I did all those test papers, working, studying over and over and over again. I revised over and over and over again. And I gave my exams to the best of my ability on all the results in the screen said, pass. Unless and until you answer your whys, you will not be able to remain motivated. You need motivation? Answer your whys. Answer your whys. Why do you want to do what you want to do? Is it because of your father? You want to make your father's dream come true? 
Is it because of your mother? Your mother is looking a dream for you and you want to make her dream come true? Is it because of your siblings, your brother, your sister, your other family members? Or is it probably because yourself? You say, I want to become rich because I want to prove to the world that I am a rich person and I am not a poor person. You got to answer your why's. Why do you want to become what you want to become? Answer your why's. Because this is where, this is exactly where motivation lies. What are you waiting for? Whatever it takes. Even if it takes for you to learn something, learn it. If it takes for you to work hard, work hard. If it takes for you to get up early in the morning, get up early in the morning. If it takes for you to work in day in and day out, do it. He was a world heavyweight champion in boxing, Mike Tyson. Darte se log uske naam se. Or Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson won 37 fights back to back. Apne life ki pehli fight se lekar. 37 fights tak Mike Tyson har ek fight jeet na gaya. Ek bhi fight ko nahi hara. But I mean, people used to sweat by his name. Karte ke log uske naam se. 37 fight lagata jeetna is no game. And he was the world heavyweight champion. 37 fight lagata jeetne jeetne ke baad, jo 38 bhi fight uski thi, wo thi against James Buston Douglas. And who was James Bustin Douglas? No one? A normal boxer? Very normal boxer. He never became a heavyweight champion in his life. He never became a heavyweight champion in his life. He never became a heavyweight champion in his life. Very normal boxer. 38th match Mike Tyson against James Bustin Douglas. It was a one-sided match. They said Mike Tyson is going to win anyways. All the media is surprised. All the world is surprised. Mike Tyson lost the match. 38th fight, Mike Tyson lost it. How come? How can this happen? सारा का सारा मीडिया पागलों की तरह जेम्स बस्टिन डगलस के पीछे बस्टिन डगलस ये तुमने किया कैसे? How did you just won against Mike Tyson? Impossible. How could you do the impossible? ये किया कैसे तुमने? He said, before this match, my mother declared to the world that her son is going to beat Mike Tyson. She declared it to the world, to the relatives, to the friends, everybody, and she was extremely happy. And James Bustin Douglas said, Ma, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? I'm not too sure. She said, you are not sure. I am sure because I believe in my son. My son is going to beat the hell out of Mike Tyson. And my son is going to win. He said, it was my mother's dream that I beat Mike Tyson. It was, it was my mother's dream that I become the world champion. It was my mother's dream that I become a true champion in my life by beating Mike Tyson. And not just Mike Tyson, whoever it may be. And my mother died two weeks before this match. He said, my mother died two weeks before this match. And I wanted to make her dream come true. He said, I wanted to make her dream come true. Mike Tyson ke alawa, agar waha par so Mike Tyson bhi hote, uske babazun mein ye match jeetta. Because it was my mother's dream and I wanted to fulfill my mother's dream. Ta ye sosta hai ki mein special nahi hoon. Agar yaha ek bhi sosta hai ki mein vardi nahi hoon, meri request hai usse, ki aaj ki shaam apne parents ke saath bita lena. Aaj ki shaam tanhai mein apne parents ke saath bita lena aur aapki maa, aapki pita ji aapko batayenge ki aap kitne special ho. There is nobody in the entire world who has a fingerprint like you. Luck, naseeb. Kais maise dekhta hoon jo apne naseeb ko pakad ke bachte hai. Jo ye kehte hai ki it's only and only because of my luck. If I'm failing, it's only because of my luck. Naseeb ki wajay se aapki zindagi mein kuch nahi hota. Agar do tarah ke loog hai. Believe karte hai naseeb, kuch believe nahi karte hai naseeb ke oopar. आप मुझे एक बात बताओ। अगर आपकी नसीब की वजह से ही सब कुछ होता है, अगर आपके लक की वजह से ही सब कुछ ये हो रहा है, तो मेहनत क्यों कर रहे हो? मेहनत करने की क्या जरूरत है? और अगर नसीब में नहीं लिखा तो मेहनत करके क्या उखाड़ लोगे? क्या उखाड़ लोगे? नसीब को लेकर के मत बैठो। जब आप अपने नसीब को you command respect, power, recognition, social status, everything. It has amazing, amazing power. I said, I'm the king of the jungle now. If you do what is easy, if you do what is easy, your life will be hard. Your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. I am sure all of you could relate to it. I'm sure all of you could relate to it, understand it.
what I just said, yes or no? Friends, give me a quick confirmation in the chat box if I'm visible, if I'm audible. I want to get a quick confirmation from all of you. Welcome, welcome to yet another day, day 21 of the Superpower Success Summit. Art of healthy lifestyle. Here is my question for all of you. The question is, are you living a healthy lifestyle? Is your lifestyle healthy or unhealthy? Here is a question for you and let me know. Let me know everybody in the chat box. When you look at your life, when you look at your day, when you look at your choices, when you look at the number of hours you sleep, when you look at the number of gla uh, the glasses, uh, you know, the water that you drink, how many glasses you drink every day, when you look at uh, the food that you eat, uh, when you look at the time that you spend on smartphones and all of that, your choices, your habits, your lifestyle, here is my question for you. Do you choose uh, to walk on stairs or use escalator? Do you walk or you straight away pick up your bike, your scooty or your car? Here is my question for you. The question is, how's your lifestyle? Is it healthy? Is it unhealthy? Or is it somewhere in between? <laughs> and that is what today's session is all about. Dosto, aaj ka ye session is about healthy lifestyle. I'm excited for, for today's session because, see, the bottom line is, it's a farak nahi padta ki aap kya karna chaate ho. Aap jo bhi karna chaate ho life mein tabhi kar paoge jab aap healthy ho. Or healthy ho na sirf or sirf ek, um, ek momentary, uh, it's not something, you know, like, uh, let, me, let me be in a healthy state for about six months. Uh, in the next six months, I'll gain six pack abs and then back on. The moment I achieve it, I get my photo shoot done. And then with it, I drop the idea and I come back to my, my, my old routine lifestyle. A lot of people do that. Yes or no? A lot of people lose weight to only gain weight at the end of it all. A lot of people start their morning walk and they, a lot of people start, uh, hit gym. A lot of people quit eating a lot of stuff. But eventually what happens? Only for a few months, only for a limited time. We're talking about lifestyle. We're talking about your entire lifestyle. You, you make a lifestyle shift. And if you understand, if you make this lifestyle shift, you lead a healthy life. Or dosto, health, I will tell you before in our summit, I want to say this again. That healthy lifestyle will come to your habit, to your routine, to stay healthy. And that is what this session is all about today. I have an expert. I have an expert who will be speaking on this topic. I'm excited to introduce this man because he's a living example, living example of what, what we are going to be discussing here today. Now, I want to invite this expert who is uh, who has who's been a, who's been working in this domain, helping a lot of people lead and live a healthy lifestyle. As I said, this man is a living example of what he's going to be teaching. Friends, with your permission, I want to invite on screen none other than Vishwas. There you go. Vishwas, can I have you on screen? There you go. Fantastic. Vishwas, welcome. Welcome to the Superpower Success Summit. And uh, thank you very much for accepting the invitation to be here. Hello. Good evening, Nitin, sir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for having me here. Great, Vishwas. It's a pleasure to have you here. I'm excited for this session. Uh, because this is indeed one of my favorite topic, which is healthy lifestyle. Baat sirf ye nahi hai ki do mahina gym gaye aur body banai. Baat hai healthy lifestyle ki, right, Vishwas? Vishwas, uh, I'm I'm not sure if you're keeping an eye on the summit, man. But hey, is a question for you. Uh, 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 what's your take on this 30 day summit? This initiative that we have taken to invite speakers like you live for 30 days. We are on day 21. I wish I, I could, uh, you know, have you uh, there on the day one or two, but we have a lot of speakers sharing their insights. What's your take on the Superpower Success Summit, Vishwas? Yeah, you know what? Uh, when I was a child, I had a dream. And that dream was to grow up and become a watchman in a library. You know why? Because there's so many interesting things in the world. And you can find out so many interesting things from books. And I wanted to spend my entire life doing that. And unfortunately, the sad reality is we can't do that, you know. But in a summit like this, you have people who are spending so much time, energy, passion, learning about so many different topics. And they are selflessly coming together to share uh, with the general public. And we have access to this. Um, yeah. And that is, uh, for me, the biggest thing about this. 
So uh, I'm really happy and excited to, first of all, that such a thing is happening. And you guys are working hard to put together this and so many speakers uh, in the last few days and also for the next several days, they are taking their time and energy to share this. This is the biggest thing for me. It indeed is, Vishwas. Thanks to thanks to speakers like you who have accepted our invitations to be here with, with, with no expectations of getting anything in return and doing this entire uh, summit, just like speakers like you, for free, which is absolutely incredible. We are able to do it because of people like you. And I want to thank you for being a part of this summit. Vishwas, the art of healthy lifestyle. I know you for quite some time. And I know how close this topic to you. Uh, I, I am just keen to know um, why should people be interested in this topic, the art of healthy lifestyle? What's in it for them? How it can help them, Vishwas? I would like to hear it from you. Sure. So, you know, uh, you, me, anybody, right? It doesn't matter male, female, young, old, student, professional, retired, anybody. We want to live long, right? We want to live, uh, we want to have energy for the things that we want to do and for the things that we have to do. And sometimes that the, thing, the things that we are forced to do, we want to have energy and we don't want to deal with pain and we want, our, we want to have the ability to rely on our body and on our mind to do all these things, right? So, uh, but there is a, I feel there is some lack of structured information. How can we reach that goal? If this is my end goal, in my journey of health or fitness, how can I get there? What are the components that I should take care of to get there? There is some uh, lack of information about this. This is what I feel. This is one thing. The second thing is that we can't really outsource our health, right? So I have to work on my own body. I can't pay somebody to do it for me. And the third thing is that it takes time, right? We can't, uh, this is not Amazon Prime guaranteed 30 minute delivery. It won't happen. So it's better to start sooner rather than later. I like the way you put it, man. You can't outsource your health, can you? Hey, I'm going to pay you. Uh, uh, do something so that I stay healthy. <laughs> uh, it, nobody else can do your push-ups uh, for you is something that I said in the video as well. And exactly. I really like when he, uh, when he gave this prime example. Uh, Vishwas, I'm all excited to hear you, man. The stage is all yours. Please take the audience through your ideas in the art of healthy lifestyle session. Over to you, Vishwas. Sure. Uh, thank you very much for that uh, very nice introduction. Uh, thank you all, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for taking your time to be with me today. So I'm going to share uh, all about what I think a healthy lifestyle is all about. But let me give you an introduction, why I got started in this. It will help set the context of where this information is coming from, right? So I'm 39 and a half years old, and I was, I am an athlete by passion. By profession, I'm an engineer by profession and training. Uh, but the thing is that I was not always an athlete. In fact, throughout my childhood, I was more interested in books than anything else. And really, I never even thought about, uh, it never entered my mind that I want to live long or I want to be healthy or I want to be pain-free. Uh, so eight years back, I had my daughter and when she was born, it entered my head. I want to live long, see her grow up and I want to see her kids. Okay. And when I am an engineer, how can I do this? Right. And I realized that I didn't have an answer. I didn't know how I can do that. So whatever I just said, that people want to live long, we don't want to have pain, and we want to have energy. So this is exactly what went through my mind, but I didn't know how to get there. So I started thinking a lot about this. I started researching a lot about this. I started meeting a lot of people, talking to a lot of people, trying various things. And what I'd like to share with you is um, my experience and thoughts from that journey, which began when I became a father eight years back. And I hope that it is useful for you, right? So this is how I started. So the human body is a really complex machine. Uh, human body and mind, they are some of the most complicated things in the world. A couple of weeks back, I bought this egg boiler on, on Amazon. You know, I'm actually an electronics engineer by training. So when I see this egg boiler, I understand that it's a very simple thing. 
इसमें कुछ नहीं है एक सेंसर है एक हीटर है यू हैव टू मेजर सम वाटर बेस्ड ऑन हाउ मेनी एग्स यू वॉन्ट टू बॉयल यू पुट द वॉटर यू टर्न ऑन द हीटर सेंसर सेंसेस जब पानी खत्म हो जाए तो खुद ऑफ हो जाए एंड देन योर एग्स आर रेडी राइट एंड दैट्स ऑल इट इज दर इज नथिंग एल्स बट द इंस्ट्रक्शन मैन्यूअल फॉर दिस सिंपल डिवाइस इज एट पेजेस लॉन्ग ओके एंड देर इज नो इंस्ट्रक्शन मैन्यूअल फॉर सच अ कॉम्प्लिकेटेड मशीन एज अ ह्यूमन बॉडी और एज अूमन माइंड एंड द टॉपिक इज वेरी कॉम्प्लिकेटेड एंड एज आई सेड वी कॉन्ट रियली रिलाई ऑन समबडी एल्स टू टेक केयर ऑफ दीज थिंग्स फॉर आज that that means we have to take responsibility hamare khud ke khud ki zimmedari hai khud ki dekhbhal karne ka many people actually do not uh, pay attention to this question unless something goes wrong and then usually it's too late right it becomes financially very a uh, difficult situation when health goes bad uh, i'm not talking here about the things which are outside our control some accident or unforeseen circumstance we can't control but we can control our lifestyle so let's try to control it right the other thing is as i said um, i i got interested in this topic when i became a father and one thing about children is that they will not do what we ask them to do they may or may not do what we do right so at least for me i want to set an example for my kids um, guys you know i am taking trying to take care of myself and i hope that you take away the lesson from this that you guys should take care of yourself as well right and that is the beginning of this whole journey and i became interested in this question how can we build an instruction manual for our body right and since that time i i started getting deep into this question and if you think about it if you talk to people around you whenever the topic of health comes up people might say something like oh yeah my lifestyle is mostly healthy but i know i should exercise more and somebody might say yes i know that i eat a lot of junk food i should eat less etc and uh, they say somebody might say no i am good at exercise i am good at everything but my job is very stressful some people might say this or that uh, but one of the things to understand why we have this word lifestyle here is this human body being a complicated machine every little thing impacts everything else right and therefore we need to have a an overview some at least some basic knowledge of what are all the broad things that we need to take care of because it's like if you have a car and you're driving it and one wheel gets punctured you can no longer drive the car and when it comes to health and wellness it is like that we need to take care that there is not even one punctured wheel so first of all we should know where the wheels are right so that is one of the things that we'd like to talk about here the second thing is when we think about uh, our health and wellness efforts whatever we do jo bhi hum kar- karte hain to actually it, this is a very complicated top complex topic and it can be that there is not only one correct answer uh, things are not black and white hum keh nahi sakte ki ye sahi hai aur ye galat hai kisi ek individual ko ye theek lagta hai aur kisi dusre individual ko wo shayad galat ho sakta hai ye sab ho sakta hai that is why we need to learn about it to so that we can understand for us what makes sense how do i find out where my problems are how do i find an opportunity to improve my own health by myself since there are 7 billion people in the world any research etc will be based on what is applicable for the majority only but which of that part is applicable for us or for me as an individual i have to find out right so we need to learn about all these different aspects so yeah so when we think about uh, the lifestyle what are different components uh, of a lifestyle i would like to share one story with you in one of the world wars the i believe it was the i, I might be getting it wrong i think it was the english air force they were doing some review of their military strategy uh, these guys they were analyzing the aircraft which were returning they went out to fight and they came back and they were analyzing the damage patterns on these aircraft right and uh, they uh, they started seeing that okay most of the times the bullet holes on the airplanes w- were on certain places and they said okay this many percentage of the bullet holes are on this part of the aircraft so many percent on that part and so on and somebody said logically we should strengthen those parts of the aircraft then somebody started thinking hmm is this really the right approach we are only looking at the aircraft which came back 
and the pilots stayed alive and they brought the aircraft back. But there are so many aircraft which never returned. What were the things that destroyed those aircraft? So that is the stuff we really need to focus on. So in the same way, when it comes to our health and wellness, when we have some knowledge about what we need to do and we have some blind spots as well. It can be that some things that we are doing are such big mistakes that they are really causing a big problem in our lifestyle. And some things we are doing fairly well, uh, like medium well, some things we are doing pretty well. Like some people have very good eating habits, but maybe very bad sleeping habits. For some other people, it can be converse and so on. Therefore, let's try to understand what are all different areas which contribute to our health and wellness overall. And these are all really linked. And any uh, anything which is going seriously wrong in one area will really hamper our efforts to improve ourselves in, in any area. And so the major categories to think about, these are, first of all, our sleeping habits. Then it's our nutrition habits. So our habits of eating and drinking water, our habits of movement and exercise, our habits of breathing, our habits of coping with stress, uh, you know, mental relaxation or dealing with mental and emotional issues. So all of these things. So these are some broad categories. I'm not saying that this is an exhaustive list, but I'm saying that these are some of the most, uh, most important and biggest areas which are applicable to most of the people here today, right? Let's try to look at them one by one in order. And before that, I would like to say, when we try to analyze any topic, right? Uh, there are, we can try to think about it in a few different ways. Is topic ke baare mein, jo mein already kar raha hu, jo mujhe zyada karna hai, ye pehla category hai. Aur dusra category ye hai ki, jo mein galat kar raha hu, wo mujhe, I have to stop that. I have to stop making a mistake, right? That's the second category. And the third category is something that we know we need to do but for some reason we are not able to do it. So this is not about, this is not a knowledge problem, but this is an execution problem. So all the knowledge in the world will not help us unless we translate it into action, right? So that is why the first two categories are about knowledge. It, and it is about addressing our blind spots. So what are the things which I am already doing, which I need to do more of, or I, which I need to do better? This is some technical knowledge. Ye relatively easy hai, uh, seekne ke liye. I will also give some pointers to the biggest things, but it is relatively easy to learn this. Then second thing is about the blind spots. What am I doing, which I don't even know is wrong, right? And the third thing is, what am I uh, doing wrong or doing not doing, which I know I need to correct, but for some reason I'm not able to. So this is about behavior. So when we talk about health and fitness, Usually people talk about technical topics like fit, uh, exercise, food, and so on. I would like to start from the, from the other thing, which is the attitude and the behavior changes. And the reason for this is we may already be knowing something, but we are not getting a benefit from it because we are not able to translate it into action. So I would like to start there. Uh, so the first thing I would like to say really is let us have some reason why we are trying to work on this, right? I shared my story of how I got started in health and fitness because I want to stay a healthy dad for my children and I want to set a good example for my children. And that's a very emotional place to come from, right? And why this emotion is important? Because her journey may koi difficulty, koi obstacle aata hi hai. And when the difficulty arises, we need to be able to deal with it and we need to have the energy to deal with that obstacle and that will come by emotion. It will not come by cold reason. So let us, I'd, I would I'd suggest to you all, find your emotional reason. Why do you want to get healthier and what exactly you want to achieve, right? So once we have that emotional reason, let us try to identify what are the obstacles which are stopping us. Shayad koi vyakti ko control nahi hota junk food kaane se. Okay? Shayad kisi vyakti ko Exercise karne ka man nahi aata. So what stops one individual is not the same which stops another individual. If we know what our weakness is, we can come up with a plan to address it. So let's try to understand what is stopping us. That's the second step, right? 
And the third step, it's really to have a plan. What is this plan? Let us not make a 30-day plan, 60-day plan, five-year plan, okay? Because so many things can change. I am asking you to make a 30-second plan. So once you know that you have an ob ob objection, uh, you have a uh, complication. So for example, I like to eat junk food. I like to sit late at night. I want to eat junk food while watching Netflix. For me, that is personally a weakness. Now I know that that is my weakness. So what I'm going to do is I'll make a 60 second plan, which is when my mind says, boss, turn on the Netflix, bring the peanuts, bring the alcohol, whatever it is, right? I'm going to spend 60 minutes, 60 seconds just waiting. I will not bring the peanuts for 60 seconds. After that, if I want, I can still bring it. So can you control yourself for 30 seconds or 60 seconds? If you can do that, then you're golden. This is what I have found works for me. This uh, I call this strategy as a, a micro habit, right? Same thing. When my mind says, I don't feel like exercising, I don't force myself to exercise. I just tell myself, okay, you don't need to exercise. You just need to change into your gym clothes. You just need to put on your shoes. After that, uske baad dekhte hai. Pehle gym clothes pehno, shoes pehno. Uske baad, uh, chahe to chhod do. Okay, when we do this, most of the time, I have found that I am able to finish my workout. Okay, it's just we have to find a way to bring down the resistance of our brain and make our brain cooperate with us, right? This is a behavior hack. So this is the biggest thing which I would like to share from a behavior change kind of perspective, right? So having said that, let me move on to some technical things. So I was saying that we need to take care of sleep, food, movement, breath, and stress, right? Let's go one by one. Start with sleep. Let's think about it. On average, people sleep eight hours a day. In one day, there are 24 hours. So this means if I sleep eight hours out of 24, I'm actually spending one third of my entire life sleeping, isn't it? So if my sleep habits are wrong, it's going to make a huge difference to the quality of my life. So it's very important to get this right. So what is really the importance of sleep, right? So if you think about it from physiology perspective, our body deals with certain things every day, minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day, week by week, month by month. Some of those things help our body to get better. Some of those things are challenging to our body in terms of survival. And it is the job of our body to cope with all this and to deal with this stress of simply surviving. And it deals with this stress by making repairs while sleeping only. Sleeping is the biggest way to deal with stress. And there is really, we cannot take a pill to deal with sleep. We can't, can, can, we can't shrink the eight hours into six hours. Why can't we shrink eight hours into six hours? For this, we need to understand a little bit of sleep science. The sleep which happens at the beginning of the night is not the same as the sleep which happens at the end of the night or close to the early morning. So in the body, different processes are happening at different times. And if this process cannot be broken, so sleep happens in a cycle. So there is an 80 or 90 minute cycle and there is four or five such cycles required every night for the entire sleep to be considered complete. How do you know if you are sleeping enough? There are a few simple tests. First of all, if you can't wake up without an alarm, hey, you're not getting enough sleep. Let's say you're waking up because of habit or whatever. But as soon as you wake up, you're, you're like, without a coffee, I can't start. You don't have enough sleep, right? Or let us say you wake up and you don't need the coffee, but people all around you are saying, hey, man, why is your mood so bad today? Why are you so irritable? If your mood is not good, it means your sleep is not enough. It, it's a big indication, right? So first of all, do not compromise on the number of hours of sleep. This is one thing. How can we make the quality of our sleep better? The biggest thing is do not interrupt the night sleep. A few more practical hints. It's not only our eyes, but the skin on the entire body can sense the presence of light. And the thing is that light makes our body wake up and alert. So do not keep any kind of light in your bedroom. Okay, and cover your eyes with, a, with an eye mask. And it is the same thing with sound. Whenever there is a sound, your brain gets active and it's like, what's going on? I need to be alert. So we don't want that. Put earplugs if necessary. Keep your bedroom quiet. 
and dark and keep it cool. Ideally, 18 to 20 degrees centigrade is a good temperature. But remember, in general, that cooler weather or cooler temperatures are better for good sleep quality. Right. One more thing. Let us try to avoid any kind of stimulants like tea, coffee, smoking. Five to six hours before bedtime. These all things will really drastically improve the quality of our sleep. Let me move on to the next one, uh, which is about the nutrition. So when it comes to nutrition, so I, I started the sleep talk, topic by saying it is very important because we are spending one third of our life sleeping. If you look at the average number of times that we are eating, most people eat, let us say, three times or more in a day, right? So this is the next thing which has a very big opportunity to impact the quality of our life. And so let us try to understand it. What is important in nutrition? There are various factors. First of all, what we consume, how much we consume, when we consume it. All, all these things are important. As for what we are consuming, food is mainly made up of certain main food groups. We call them as proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. So sometimes you will see in the literature that, you know, you might see... Uh, in the grocery store, if you try to pick up something, it says low fat, no fat, no salt, etc. And that all gives a message like certain things are bad. Actually, it is not so. Our body requires all three, protein, fat and carbohydrate. So if we are deficient in any of them, it can be a problem. However, deficiency in protein is one of the most significant ones. Why is this so? The reason for this is because our body is capable of storing fat and carbohydrate, but it is not capable of storing protein. Therefore, we need to consume protein with every, every time we have a meal, have a little bit of protein. Make sure there is some protein with that. What is, the, so I was saying that we cannot store protein, so we need to consume it with every meal. There is another advantage to consuming protein. Whenever we consume carbohydrate, insulin is produced in our body, and when too much insulin is produced over a period of time, this can lead to diabetic conditions. We know that diabetes is a lifestyle disease. So we want to uh, forestall that. When we consume protein, it moderates this effect. And we don't need that much insulin to deal with the carbohydrate in our body if we consume protein along with the carbohydrate. So a practical tip I would like to give you is make sure to eat your protein first in the meal. There is another advantage to consuming your protein. It is satisfying. It, so have you ever had the feeling where you've eaten fruit when you're hungry? After 20 minutes, you're hungry again. And the reason for this is that fruit is basically carbohydrate and it is digested very quickly. Protein is not digested quickly, which means you will not feel hungry for some time, right? So you will have energy for a longer time because the digestion process takes longer. So this is one of the biggest things that I can say regarding nutrition. Make sure that we consume protein with every meal. Most of the people, not only in India, but all over the world, are deficient in protein consumption. What is a good amount of protein to consume? We can calculate based on our body weight. Let us say I'm 70 kilos in body weight. I should be aiming for about one and a half to two grams of protein per day per kilogram of body weight. So that is 70 kilos into one and a half is about 105 grams. So that I will split into three meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So it is something like I will have 30 to 35 grams of protein with every meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's a good rule of thumb. Like I said, there is a lot of individual variation. So what I'm telling is a generality only. Uh, we will have to adjust for individuals. The second biggest thing which I want to tell about nutrition is our body is made up of about 50%. Half of our body is made up of water. If you measure, now I said I'm 70 kilos in weight, about 35 kilos of that is simply water. If that 35 kilos becomes 30 kilos, if I get dehydrated by 5 kilos, then I am in mortal danger. It is extremely important to take care of hydration. Make sure that you consume at least two and a half liters of water every day. These are the two biggest things. Make sure to keep sipping water throughout the day. You can count the number of bottles you have consumed. If you have a one liter bottle, make sure you have consumed two and a half, at least two and a half to three in a day. 
that's a very good way uh, to take care of your nutrition journey. The, the third thing I would like to talk about is the exercise topic, right? So when it comes to exercise, there is a lot of confusion because there's a lot of options. It's like a menu with so many things on it. So some people are doing cycling, some people are doing running, some people do yoga, some people do dance, Zumba, some people are lifting weights, some people are doing some other things, right? Maybe playing sports, playing badminton, playing volleyball, cricket, et cetera, et cetera. And depending on the type of person I am, a different thing could attract me. Now, one thing which I want to tell is that the human body is capable of expressing so many different qualities. Uh, stamina, for example. Stamina is a quality, a physical quality, which some people have more of and some people have less of. Strength is another example of a quality which some people have more of and some people less. Mobility. Mobility is all about how well we can move our joints. So if I look at my shoulder, shoulder is supposed to be able to move in so many different directions, right? So how well can I move my shoulder? That is about mobility, right? So strength, stamina, and mobility, these are the three biggest categories we should be thinking about. Let us not think about running, cycling, weights, yoga, dance, etc. We should think about, am I getting enough strength in my exercise program? Am I getting enough stamina? Am I getting enough mobility? Why are these three categories important? First of all, let's talk about mobility. If I lose mobility in my shoulder, I am going to develop pains. So I mentioned to you, I'm an engineer. I work at a desk, at a laptop. That is my job. So many people, uh, India is an IT country. There's a lot of IT work happening in India. There are many, many people who have lots of pains with their shoulders, with their back, uh, with their hips, etc. And these are all mobility problems. How do we resolve mobility problems? It's very simple. You look at every joint and you think about what are all the ways in which it can move? And we need to move those joints in all the possible ways as often as possible. It's that simple. Let's think about how, how, how does a child learn multiplication tables, right? It doesn't practice multiplication tables one day in a week. It practices every single day, right? And then the brain learns, hey, 3 times 2 is 6. You just remember it. 6 times 3, 18. You don't have to think. You don't have to calculate. Your body just knows. Your brain just knows. It is the same with movement. Movement is learned by repetition. Mobility is nothing but movement. If you want to be able to move your spine, your shoulders, your hips, your feet, your ankles, your wrists, fingers, whatever it is, you need to move it in all the possible ways in which it can move as often as possible. This is a very big thing which will keep you pain-free. The second thing which I want to tell is about the stamina. Stamina or endurance. Well, if you think about it, if you want to live long, your heart has to be beating and powerful and working well for a long time, 80 years, 90 years, 100 years, 110 years. Life is an endurance game. Therefore, we really need to take care of endurance in our fitness program because uh, this is what will help our heart be healthy for those 110 years. How do we take care of endurance? Again, the formula is very simple. Do easy things, do them often over time, improve how much you are doing and do it for a long time. Let me take an example. Let me say, I, I will take my own example. So endurance is all about doing a thing for a long time. So if you are walking, running, cycling, swimming for 30 minutes, that's an endurance activity. So now let us say you can do 30 minutes running uh, and let us say that is the limit of your ability, right? And to do a 30-minute run is challenging. I'm just taking an example. How should you plan your endurance uh, training in your fitness regimen? Just think about doing as often as possible, but do not go to your limit. What is as often as possible? Doing something every day. Don't go to the limit. What does that mean? Let's try to take something like 40 to 50% of our limit. If my limit is 30 minutes walk, I will try to walk every day. First of all, I will make sure that I have a walking habit every day. I make sure that every time I walk, I will do about 40 to 50% of my limit, which is somewhere around 15 minutes, right? And then over time, let's say over one month, two months, I will try to take my daily walk from 15 minutes gradually to 20 minutes, to 25 minutes, until I'm walking 30 minutes every day. 
right? And then slowly I will make it a little bit harder. Here and there I will add one or two minutes of running in that 30 minutes of um, walking. So basically the formula is you need to make your body feel like this is trivial to do. If you can convince your body that this is not stressful, it will adapt to it and it will make the fitness adjustment. Whereas if we do the opposite, if we run at our limit every day, it is a lot of stress. Your body has to spend resources to deal with it. And every day, it is like you put money in your account and at the end of the day, you take all of it out. Tomorrow, you deposit 100 rupees again. By the end of the day, you take out 100 rupees again. All the time in your account, you have zero. What we want to do is here and there, put 5 rupees, 10 rupees. Okay, once in a while, we take out 20 rupees. So over time, we want our account to grow, right? And this is the way to do it. A similar strategy works with strength. Strength is all about doing very hard things. So if I translate my 30-minute run example to strength, let me say I can lift something like 20 kilos, and that is the limit. What I will try to do is something like lifting about 40 to 50 percent, but I do it often. Something like 8, 10 kilos. And I do it, try to do it as often as possible, four days a week, five days a week. But I do not exhaust myself. And over a period of time, we can see that our 10 kilos will move up. Uh, sorry, our 20 kilo limit will move up. It will move up to 22, 25 and so on. But we are doing it in such a way that we are not exhausting ourselves. So these are some of the things which I wanted to share with you. Please keep in mind that these are some general considerations which I am trying to simplify, which are applicable to majority of the people majority of the time, right? And individual considerations vary depending on background, depending on your history, medical history, training history, your age, maybe your injury history, etc. And this is where the value of a coach comes in, right? So the, the fitness coaches, they are professionals in this domain. They are the ones who are capable of helping you translate these general considerations into what is applicable for you. I am trying to give everybody a starting point. There's plenty of people who are doing this. Uh, please use the resources which are ap applicable to you. Please take it as a responsibility to educate yourself and your children. Our next generation should be better than us. And uh, I'm trying to do my part in that. I wish you all good luck in your journey. Uh, I would like to thank the host for having me here for this and giving me an opportunity to share my views. Thank you so much. Vishwas, you've said thank you so much, but man, I want to hear a lot more from you. What a session. It was absolutely terrific to hear these ideas from you. I really want to give you a round of applause there, Vishwas. Let's do that. Let's hear it. Again. An absolutely amazing session, Vishwas. I mean... Uh, I was taking my notes and I loved when you shared those gold nuggets in between. Friends, let me know in the chat box. How was the session? It was short. It was, I'm sure all of us wanted to hear more from him. I mean, I mean, we felt like it should be at least a three hour session when, when, we, when Vishwas was sharing his ideas. Let me know in the chat box. It's going to be great. Vishwas, many questions for you. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Shoot. <laughs> Question number one. Well, let me, I mean, I'm sure everybody loved the session. I loved it. I was like, I was looking at my teammates. I was like, Are nahi abhi vishwas ko aur sunna hai. <laughs> but I'm sure we're going to be, um, we'll have many more such sessions together, Vishwas. I really want to thank you and see, see the comments flowing in. Everybody just loved it. And I really want to thank you for the session. Vishwas, protein ki apne yeah. baat. You, you said something about protein. You said, yes. you said measure your body weight, yeah. multiply it by one and a half, 1.5 or two. And that's yeah. the amount of protein that one should intake, divide it by three and then breakfast, lunch and dinner. Yes. What to eat is something that I want to hear from you for yeah. people who, who eat non-veg and people who yeah. do not take non-veg. Yeah. Please suggest. Fair enough. So this is always a difficult question because dietary preferences are very individual. The other thing is that lots of people have food allergies, right? Yeah. So this is one of the reasons why we need to experiment, uh, take ourselves as an experiment and try to find out what works for us. But let mm -hmm. me try to answer your question in a general way. Mm -hmm. In general, we need, so when I say protein, protein is made of amino acids and we need many different amino acids. So mm -hmm. when, when we say a food has protein, it may mm -hmm. not have all the amino acids we need. 
Mm-hmm. So first guideline is try to include foods. Don't eat the same thing all the time. Mm-hmm. Include a variety of different foods. Okay, and it doesn't matter whether you're non-vegetarian or vegetarian. Try to add. So if you do a simple Google search, uh, protein-rich foods, you will find so many options. I will give you some examples. Eggs are great. Milk products are great. Cheese is great. Right. Uh, paneer is great. Um, any kind of meat is good. Like poultry is good, fish is good, etc. For the pure vegans, it gets a little bit harder. Uh, one guideline which I would like to tell is uh, we have the protein powders available and they are good and they can help to match these uh, this thing. But let us not try to get caught up with these numbers. What I would like to encourage people to do is maybe you are consuming only 20 grams in a day. Try to make that 20 into 30 in a day. Then over time, make that 30 into 40. Then you have gone from 20 to 40. You're getting twice as much as you used to do before. Don't worry about how can I take my 20 to 100 grams. Don't worry about that. Just add protein sources like eggs, paneer, any kind of meat, beans, peas, right? All kinds of these things. Make sure you eat it first. That's that that's, that's the answer. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. it, it does. Yeah. It does indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Vishwas, yeah. many more questions and specifically yeah. related to how you do it, right? So, yeah. so exercise, gym or home? When, when we talk about Vishwas, do you yeah. prefer to uh, get a gym, uh, um, you know, the, the subscription, the membership and, yeah. uh, and hit the gym every day? Or do you like yeah. to uh, do your stuff at home, Vishwas? So, you know what? The most important thing is whether you do something or not and how long you're doing it, right? Whatever yeah. makes you do it for the next 10 years is the best thing for you. If, that is, like, if you're the kind people. of guy who wants to be with people and music in a gym, then you yeah. should go to a gym. If you yeah. don't like crowds, you want to be by yourself, do it at home. If what works yeah. for you is the right thing. True, true. Because why I asked is a lot of people, this is the most difficult part. Although you very, I think you beautifully answered that question. The problem is getting out of the bed. The problem yeah. is the thinking part. Yeah. When you wake up in the morning, the picture that you have in the mind is like, oh, man, who's going to go out there and work out? Sweat it out there. And that's a tough part. But I think you really answered it in, in a beautiful manner. You said, you don't think about that. The only thing that you say is, hmm, um, how about just wearing those jogging shoes? How about that? Yeah. And we'll see how it goes from there on. I think I loved when you said that. That was the moment of the day for me. And um, yeah, so so why not? Let's just, let me just try wearing that shoe and let's see. And then you're like, hmm, let me just go out. And let's see if, if I feel like working out and all. Let's see. So let's say you uh, let's say you take um, five rounds of your society every day, and you're like, I don't feel like going taking going out or taking five rounds. No problem. How about just hitting the ground floor, get in the lift, hit the ground floor. Let's see. Exactly. If it is like, it will come back. <laughs> you know, this is I, something I I've heard it. consistently from everybody. Sometimes the best workouts are when you feel the worst. You won't feel like you can do it at all, but you just go there and show up and you'll find that your body just performs. I completely agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Which was any other suggestions for habit formation? These, any other gold nuggets that you want to share? Sometimes we don't, you know, to, to, to develop those habits, healthy yeah. lifestyle habits. Any yeah. other suggestion to develop some habits? Oh, yeah. So I love books, right? I mean, we are in this, (laughs) we we know each other through books. So I read a lot. Okay, so I read a lot of stuff about uh, behavioral psychology, behavior, cognitive behavioral therapy, etc. But maybe it's not what the audience is looking for. Mm -hmm. So I will just share instead. uh, For me personally, one thing which really hits home is reading biographies of athletes or reading uh, books about military personnel, how military personnel train because they are, maybe it is policemen, maybe it is fire, uh, uh, emergency fire personnel, maybe it is uh, soldiers, right? Because these guys, for them, performance is part of survival and part of the job. They have to do it. How do they do it, right? And when you see some of the incredible things that people do, uh, do we have time? Can I share a quick story? Yeah, yeah. Please yeah. go ahead. So, you know, uh, I am a kettlebell sport athlete. And when I met... Uh, the, the coach who introduced me to kettlebell. So he's from Pune. He's, uh, he's called uh, Mr. Parag Metre. Look him up. Uh, he came to Bangalore to do a session. And, uh, you know, the session was due to start at uh, like 10 a.m. And at 9.30, I got a call saying, uh, bro, my bus is broken down. 
I am stuck on the highway. We will still do the session, but we will start after lunch. Give me time to reach Bangalore. I said, okay, it was fine for me. Okay, so I went there at uh, after lunch. We started, and he has come there. He has not had breakfast. He has not had a shower. He has not managed to, you know, he was in the broken down bus. But he, as soon as he reached there, he started the session. That's commitment, right? Mm -hmm. And then the, the session finished around seven p.m. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, uh, days. I was like, oh God, days done. I'm ready to sleep for one week. Mm -hmm. Then he started warming up. Okay, I'm I'm like, well, boss, it's it's eight thirty p.m. What are you doing? I'm warming mm -hmm. up. I haven't done my training. No breakfast, mm -hmm. no lunch. Mm -hmm. He's spent a full day training us. He's come from out of station. He has not mm -hmm. found a hotel. Okay, mm -hmm. and then after his training, he wanted to do his running session. Outside, mm -hmm. there's a road full of traffic. Okay, mm -hmm. and then he looks. He uh, he's he's not from Bangalore, no. So he asked the gym owner, "Where can I run?" There were no mm -hmm. treadmills in that. Uh, it was a lifting kind of gym. Okay, so he said, like you know, there's traffic outside and it's dark. Oh, there's a railway track. At 9 p.m., he started running in the dark on a railway track. After all this. And you see people doing this kind of stuff, and these are the things which personally drive me. That guy can do it. I can do more than I think I can right now. Like whatever stopping me is trivial. So this is just one, okay? And when you la start looking for such stories, you'll find dozens. I think Today, uh, that yeah, was yeah, yeah. yeah, that was amazing. That was really yeah. inspiring, indeed. Yeah. So whatever it's stopping me is trivial. Everybody, yeah. just, just just recap this line in in, in your mind. Everything that's stopping you is trivial, because when you actually read those those autobiographies or the stories of people who have achieved something in their life, especially uh, athletes, trainers, sports people, you will really see what is it that they do to achieve what they've achieved and to keep themselves healthy, fit, stamina. You talked about strength. You talked about stamina. You talked about mobility. And, uh, and if you see those people, what is it that they're doing to keep all of this in place? It's actually, actually incredible. Which was, I also really liked uh, this mobility point that you made. You said uh, the purpose is to move all your joints. Yes. And I was just thinking, you know, all the yoga poses that I do when I sit down to do my yoga, isn't, yeah. isn't that's exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. I think right. uh, I think that's exactly what I'm doing. They're trying to move all my joints, and I was just thinking, and I was like, man, aside scientifically, it makes sense to me, and I really liked it when you shared that. Um, which was a lot of times, um, you know, this uh, sleep thing. Sleep yeah. thing has a bit of an issue for a lot of people. Working, mm -hmm. yeah, they they're working till late. They have to get up early, and a lot of stuff. Do you recommend catching up some sleep during the day? Sure. If you have time, I think it's definitely helpful. Adding 20, 30 minutes here and there will make a big difference. But uh, that is like an emergency tactic, right? You, you, you couldn't sleep last night. Try to get a nap today if possible. But don't base your lifestyle on saying, I'm only going to get sleep six hours every night because I'm planning to nap tomorrow. Um, so if necessary, add a nap. It won't hurt. But, you know, this is a not so easy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard. And, but what I have found is, unless you are a new parent, usually you can find a way to improve your lifestyle so that you can get better sleep. Stop the Netflix binges. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if, if, and the other thing is, when food habits improve, when movement habits improve, the quality of sleep, these things, they are all connected. Yeah. The one thing which I can tell is if you're a new parent, then good luck because I don't have any good advice. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, Tough I'm luck. Yeah. glad, yeah, I'm glad yeah. that you made an exception for new parents. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because uh, uh, it's not easy. It's not it's easy. Not at all. Parents. Not easy. It's yeah. not at all. Yeah. Which yeah. was a lot of people, they have yeah. these smart watches. They have these smart watches that have run their wrist. Yeah. And the only thing that they have their eyes on is the 10K steps a day. Yeah. Yeah. Are you a big fan of this uh, this thing? Do you think it's uh, it's uh, it's? I mean, is this like all that we need to do? Walk ten steps, uh, ten thousand steps. Sorry, uh, daily, yeah. and that's pretty much it. You're good to go. What's your take on okay. the ten k steps? So ten k is really just a proxy for how long you spend to get those steps, right? Mm -hmm. Because for me personally, I do seven thousand steps in one hour. So to do ten k, I should be on my feet for like 75, 80 minutes, right? So that is simply endurance work. 
for okay. some people it helps to give a motivate yesterday i did 8k today let me try for 8 and a half k if you mm-hmm. are that kind of guy uh it helps but there mm-hmm. is no magic in the number itself the 10 mm-hmm. itself there is no magic so what i will tell is there is magic in 30 minutes of continuous movement 30 so the minutes real magic more. you're saying is is in continuous movement for 30 minutes the heart has to be working not too hard but harder than you know uh, it should be uh, to give numbers right so uh, it should be working somewhere around let us say somewhere around 120 to 140 beats per minute continuously mm-hmm. like like this not like up and down not spiking mm-hmm. okay yeah. uh, for 30 minutes minimum continuously mm-hmm. now yeah. maybe if you are fit you need to run fast to get your heart rate up if you are not fit when you walk your heart rate is already there the magic is in exerting to that extent for 30 minutes or more that's where the physiological benefit comes from makes sense makes sense yeah. my last question yeah. which was you said um you said you're from it background and you also yeah. touched upon uh the working habits working for long hours a lot of yeah. really demanding profession i think every profession is demanding now nowadays yeah. so when people are busy when they have they have to sit in front of their systems almost all day yeah. any suggestions for working people uh, people are working from home when they have to work for long hours sit yeah. in front of their systems for long hours although we we had a session the other day on uh, desk yoga you know move yeah. a little bit do some yeah. stretches and stuff any suggestion exactly. from your side for people who are uh, who are working professionals and listening to us right now for sure yes uh, so that's a great question so uh, you know what i personally do uh, uh, so we are working from home right for the last couple of years i yeah. installed a pull up bar outside my home office okay. whenever i get up to drink water i have to do a pull up <laughs> okay so you know i can do about 12 pull ups at a stretch so doing one pull up is trivial so what i am saying is you find that thing which is trivial for you to do but which still makes some progress towards your goal right for me i'm taking pull up as an example maybe it is uh, like if you have a mobility restriction right so doing things like crawling on the floor or getting from standing to lying down on the ground to getting back up without using your hands let us say things like this will improve strength mobility etc they will get you some movement get some blood flowing right and it feels like play you don't have to think like i have to do 5 minutes of desk yoga because i did 30 minutes of work now if you're the kind of guy where the routine helps by all means go for it if you're the kind of guy get that gets put off by i have to then convert it into play interesting does that, that make sense is- Yeah. that was interesting i loved it i mean i mean i'm just thinking of uh, of uh, keeping a, a a bar there so that i can do my pull ups the moment i get out of this room that's a good idea which was i'm sure yeah. you have many more such uh, such ideas up your sleeves and I, i look forward to to hear all those ideas um in the near future but which was for now i think it yeah. was an absolutely interesting amazing insightful full of yeah. knowledge practical ideas session yeah. that you did for us and as everybody agree with me in the chat box yeah. i really want yeah. to thank you once again vishwas for taking your time out and yeah. sharing these ideas uh, yeah. with the audience any last words from your side vishwas before you yeah i just want to say thanks to you uh, for having the vision to do this your team for putting it together and i want to say thanks to god uh, for whatever circumstances and uh, my intention is why i agreed to do this session is because i am on a mission to share this right but all my journey throughout my life has led me to this moment where i have had the opportunity to learn something and had i had an opportunity hopefully to be of help to somebody else for this i'd like to thank god and my parents absolutely amazing yeah. and i really hope that you also see your grand 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 grandkids and all of us see them together <laughs> yeah. yeah thank you so much vishwas yeah. have a great thank day you. thank you all, all right you all. friends that was uh, vishwas Uh, and i love i love the session i have to admit it i really loved the way he spoke uh, crisp concise and he shared all that my ears wanted to hear and all of us isn't it i will i will observe whenever there is a topic related to health i see people paying more attention i see people not may not necessarily be taking action 
But I really um, have observed because we do these sessions and the data shows us that people are interested because it's a topic that they're interested in. Yes or no? You were you were listening to him keenly. You were you were like, um, or kya kehta hai? Or kya kehta hai? Uh, health ke baare mein hai. Uh, exercise ke baare mein, water, uh, your food, your nutrition, your stamina, your strength, your mobility, and whatnot. I really liked it. Yeah. And uh, as I said, I absolutely love this idea. All of you should give it a try. Absolutely love this idea, which is like, uh, you know, um, I really loved it. He said, don't just, let's say you're, you, you're, your mind, it, it's, it, it, it tries to convince you not to do something that you think you, you've got to do. So just try to just say, okay, let's not do it. How about, how about just, uh, let's say you want, let's say uh, you have to eat a fruit and you don't feel like eating it. So you say, hmm, how about just opening the door of the fridge, taking the fruit out and we'll keep it back again. We'll not eat it. I mean, I loved it, man. I can, I would just contemplate thinking where all I can just apply it. Yeah. I absolutely enjoyed the conversation. I'm sure all of you did that. This is what the superpower Success Summit is all about. I genuinely, sincerely hope. Dosto, ye, ye sessions aapke kaam aare. Ye sessions is bringing this change in your life, your lifestyle. I sincerely hope that you're enjoying every single session in the Superpower Success Summit. I sincerely hope that you're able to deliver this value. All of us, me, my team, every single speaker who is agreeing to come here can come in these sessions, put aside their work, come here for, for free to share these ideas with you. These, these ideas, it's, it's helping them change their lives and the lives of their mentees, their clients. And here's an opportunity for all of you through this summit to transform your life as well. Okay. Implement, implement these ideas, put them into action. Knowledge without action is what? You know it better. So my suggestion, put them into action. Yeah. Apni health ko priority par rakhiye. Ye ideas ko implement kariye. And I also suggest, research says that we forget 80% we forget of what we learn within 24 hours. We forget 80% of what we learn within 24 hours. The only way to beat it is to refresh, to go back and check it again, to revise it, to recap it. The recordings are there for you. The moment you end the session next day, I recommend that you go through the recording of the sessions on YouTube, on the same channel. Hit the subscribe button right away. Because that way you're going to, all right, I, I, this is up on my feet. And they'll be like, I need to watch it again. Go watch it. And what, once you watch it, you will, you will you know, remember these ideas for a long time. Repetition is the key. And once your subconscious absorbs it, then there won't be a problem. Okay. That's my suggestion for all of you. Well, with this, I hope that all of you enjoyed uh, day 21 of the Superpower Success Summit. And, uh, and, and, and I sincerely hope that all of you are taking these ideas, putting them into action, sharing it with people around you. I really want to thank you for choosing to be a part of the session. And now the stage is set for day 22. We're going to be meeting tomorrow, 7 p.m. Yet another topic, yet another expert will be waiting for you. Don't forget to join in 7 p.m. tomorrow. This is it in Sony saying thank you so much. Take care. Let me call upon stage. Nitin Sony. Louder, louder, louder. Come on, louder. Dosto, success in any field is 70% psychology and 30% mechanics. Kisi bhi field mein. In whatever field you choose, success is all about 70% psychology and 30% mechanics. I want to ask you, Virat Kohli has killed the century. Okay, did you kill Sachin Tendulkar? Okay, he didn't kill Dhoni. But all of these three individuals are legends. In spite of the fact that they did not score century on debut. Even if you are not able to score century on debut, you can still become a legend if you take few things right. Understand this. Why do you want to become what you want to become? Why do you want to get that success? Why do you want to get that degree? Why do you want to become a rank holder? Why do you want it? Answer your why. They are compromising on their potential. You have amazing potential in you. Why do you want to restrict it? You are not supposed to restrict your potential. Warren Buffett has 97 different streams of income. 97. 
and the day i realized the day i noticed it i said 97 what the hell what is the difference the difference is in their psychology that's where the entire difference lies that's the main thing you need to understand your psychology your mindset us pe kya chal raha hai that's what you need to focus excellent and i knew i would be the top scorer in the institute and that's exactly what i did each and every paper that i gave when i came back home i said i'm ready for the next one and i did that ready for the next one did that then i waited for my results and on the results day what did happen i feel this is that i can do now at the best i can study at the best i can put in the hard work at the best i can do whatever is possible for me to do what else can i do he actually looked at the big portrait of mount everest and he said mount everest i know you are failing me but the more and more you fail me the more and more i'm getting determined that one day i'm going to stand on top of you do you know why sir edmund helmy said he said do you know why because you even as mount everest cannot grow any further but i as a human being will keep growing that's my message to you keep growing No matter what Mount Everest you want to climb in your life, you can if you have the right mindset and if you do not let your haters enter your mind. Why? Because it's your responsibility, friends. It's your responsibility. Nobody else is going to work hard for you. Nobody else is going to bring your dream in a silver plate and say, "Hey, here is your dream. Enjoy." No, that's never going to happen. You will have to work hard. You will have to put in the hard work. You will have to work the bit and call. You will have to. You will have to make your dream come true. The responsibility is yours. I cannot do your push-ups for you, can I? Can I? Of course not. You will have to do your push-ups. What do you do? And you notice that you are not the only one who is watching that dream. You are not the only one having that dream inside you. When there are one thousand other mothers who are having the same dream for their sons, what do you do to make the dream of your mother come true? You outwork your competition. You outwork your competition. You get up early. You work harder. You stay longer. You do whatever it takes. You got to overwork. You got to outwork. You got to outsmart everybody else. Because if you don't do it, someone else is going to do it. If you don't do it, someone else is going to do it. If you are not getting up early, someone else is getting up early, and he is going to grab your position. He's going to grab your position. Understand this. You got to outwork your competition. If it means. doing anything that you have not done till date you should be interested in doing it learning techniques learning facts programming your subconscious whatever it may be be ready to out work your my intensity multiplied my hunger multiplied my seriousness multiplied i prepared like hell i was actually doing things that nobody around me was doing i was studying for 12 hours a day and i said No matter what happens on the results day, I'm going to give my best shot in this attempt. I shouldn't like anything, and I did all those test papers, working, studying over and over and over again. I revised over and over and over again, and I gave my exams to the best of my ability. On all the results day, the screen said, "Pass." Unless and until you answer your why's, you will not be able to remain motivated. You need motivation. Answer your why's. Answer your why's. Why do you want to do what you want to do? Is it because of your father? You want to make your father's dream come true? Is it because of your mother? Your mother is looking a dream for you, and you want to make her dream come true. Is it because of your siblings, your brother, your sister, your other family members, or is it probably because yourself? You say, "I want to become rich because I want to prove to the world that I am a rich person and I am not a poor person." You got to answer your why's. Why do you want to become what you want to become? Answer your why's, because this is where this is exactly where motivation lies. What are you waiting for? Whatever it takes, even if it takes for you to learn something, learn it. If it takes for you to work hard, work hard. If it takes for you to get up early in the morning, get up early in the morning. If it takes for you to work in day in and day out, do it. He was a world heavyweight champion in boxing, Mike Tyson. डरते थे लोग उसके नाम से और माइक टाइसन माइक टाइसन वन थर्टी सेवन फाइट बैक टू बैक अपनी लाइफ की पहली फाइट से लेकर थर्टी सेवन फाइट तक माइक टाइसन हर एक फाइट जीतना गया एक भी फाइट वो नहीं हरा और एम एस टीसन यूज टू ज्वाइन बाई हिस्स नेम डरते थे लोग उसके नाम से सैंतीस फाइट लगातार जीतना इज नो गेम 
एंड ही वॉज द वर्ल्ड हैवी वेट चैंपियन सैतीस फाइट लगातार जीतने जीतने के बाद जो अड़तीसवीं फाइट उसकी थी वो थी अगेंस्ट जेम्स बस्टिन डगलस और ये जेम्स बस्टिन डगलस कौन था कुछ भी नहीं अ नॉर्मल बॉक्सर वेरी नॉर्मल बॉक्सर कभी भी अपने लाइफ के अंदर हैवी वेट चैंपियन नहीं बना कभी भी उसने कोई बहुत बड़ी चैंपियनशिप नहीं जीती वेरी नॉर्मल बॉक्सर थर्टी मैच माइक टाइसन का अगेंस्ट जेम्स बस्टिन डगलस वॉज ए वन साइडेड मैच This is Mike Tyson is going to win anyways. Sara media hairan. Sari duniya hairan. Mike Tyson lost the match. 38th fight Mike Tyson lost it. How come? Ye kaise ho sakta hai? Sara ka sara media pagalon ki tarah James Boston Douglas ke piche. Boston Douglas ye tumne kiya kaise? How did you just won against Mike Tyson impossible? How could you do the impossible? Ye kiya kaise tumne? He said before this match my mother declare to the world that her son is going to beat mike tyson she declared it to the world to the relatives to the friends everybody and she was extremely happy aur james bustin douglas ne kaha ma kya kar rahe ho why are you doing that i'm not too sure she said you are not sure i am sure because i believe in my son my son is going to beat the hell out of mike tyson and my son is going to win He said it was my mother's dream that I beat Mike Tyson. It was it was my mother's dream that I become the world champion. It was my mother's dream that I become a true champion in my life by beating Mike Tyson and not just Mike Tyson whoever it may be. And my mother died 2 weeks before this match. He said my mother died 2 weeks before this match. And I wanted to make her dream come true. He said, "I wanted to make her dream come true." Mike Tyson के अलावा, अगर वहाँ पर 100 Mike Tyson भी होते, उसके बावजूद मैं ये match जीता, because it was my mother's dream and I wanted to fulfill my mother's dream. तो ये सोचता है कि मैं special नहीं हूँ। अगर यहाँ एक भी सोचता है कि मैं वर्दी नहीं हूँ, मेरी request है उससे कि आज की शाम अपने parents के साथ बिता लेना। आज की शाम तन्हाई में अपने पेरेंट्स के साथ बिता लेना और आपकी माँ आपके पिताजी आपको बताएंगे कि आप कितने स्पेशल हो देर इज नो बडी इन दर वर्ल्ड लाइक यू लक नसीब कई मैं से देखता हूं जो अपने नसीब को पकड़ के बैठते हैं जो ये कहते हैं कि इट्स ओनली एंड ओनली बिकॉज ऑफ माई लक इफ आई एम फेलिंग इट्स ओनली बिकॉज ऑफ माई लक नसीब की वजह से आपकी जिंदगी में कुछ नहीं होता तो अगर दो तरह के लोग हैं बिलीव करते हैं नसीब कुछ बिलीव नहीं करते नसीब के ऊपर आप मुझे एक बात बताओ अगर आपकी नसीब की वजह से ही सब कुछ होता है अगर आपके लक की वजह से ही सब कुछ ये हो रहा है तो मेहनत क्यों कर रहे हो मेहनत करने की क्या जरूरत है और अगर नसीब में नहीं लिखा आप तो मेहनत करके क्या उखाड़ लोगे क्या उखाड़ लोगे नसीब को लेकर के मत बैठो जब आप अपने नसीब को देख करके कहते हो कि भाई कभी ना कभी तो चमकेगा आपका नसीब आपको देख करके कहता है कभी तो समझेगा आप नहीं समझते यू कमांड रिस्पेक्ट पावर रिकॉग्निशन सोशल स्टेटस एवरीथिंग इट हैज अमेजिंग अमेजिंग द किंग ऑफ द जंग नाउ इफ यू डू वॉट इज इजी योर लाइफ विल बी हार्ड But if you do what is hard, you do what is hard. your life will be easy.